This past weekend, the Magnificent Seven celebrated the 20th anniversary of their historic Olympic gold medal win in Atlanta, commemorating the first time the U.S. women won gold in the team event. Joining us now to talk about the Fierce Five 2.0 and life after Atlanta is three-time Olympic gymnast Dominique Dawes. Welcome, Dominique. It's so great to have you here. Thank you for having me. So it's been 20 years, right, since that day yeah. in 1996. Going back what is your most vivid memory of it? You know, there's amazing memories that I kind of relive every now and then, especially during the time of the Summer Olympic Games. And I would say one that comes to mind is right before marching out during those Olympic Games, I had a little bit of a breakdown. I was overwhelmed. I was dealing with a lot of self-doubt, anxiety, fear. You know, it was very overwhelming and a great deal of pressure. And before I was about to march to, march out, I, I, you know, had a little bit of a nervous breakdown. And you were so young. We forget how young we were these very athletes young. are. We were very young. And our team Captain Amanda Borden knelt down and prayed with me and really helped me relax. And just recently we had a reunion together and she, her and I were reliving that moment. And she said I was, she was overwhelmed because she was like, you've been to the Olympics before. You should be able to handle this pressure. So it's yeah. kind of funny to think back to those moments. And you have been to the Olympics three times. You've been to the Olympics. And now what role does gymnastics play in your day-to-day -day life now? You know, actually being an Olympic gymnast has actually prepared me to be a good mom, a great mom. Um, Gymnastics really helped me learn to work well with team members, helped me learn how to set goals, have a plan to follow my passion, my dream, and to persevere. And each and every day that I'm home with my two and a half year old Kateri and my 10 month old Quinn, I have to revert back to my 18 years of training in the sport of gymnastics to be a great mom and to be a good role model. Beautiful girls. Would you encourage them to become gymnasts? You know, if you asked me many years ago, I would say absolutely not, just because <laughs> it took a toll on me physically as well as mentally, but it was what it was where I was called to be. I didn't think that was what I would want for my girls. However, Kateri's already showing promise. She can do a handstand, a forward roll, and she loves the sport of gymnastics already. And if she loves it, you have to encourage I'm her, I'm not right? going to yeah. get in her way. I'm going to be a good mom, and I'm going to support her. Right, absolutely. Now, looking ahead to Rio, what do you think are the chances of the U.S. women's team? I mean, obviously, we can't have a repeat of the Magnificent Seven because there aren't even that many yeah. gymnasts competing, but do you think there are, we have a good chance? Well, the Magnificent Seven, we were the first ever team, so we yeah. made history. So they definitely sure. can't repeat that no. in the last Olympic Games in 2012. Gabby Douglas won the all around and the team won gold being the Fierce Five and I love how this team is called the Fierce Five 2.0 yes. already. <laughs> More than likely they're going to win but I want people to still watch the Olympic Games. I don't want to be that spoiler where I'm like they're going to win it all, Simone's going to win it, don't even turn the TV on but it's exciting to watch them. They're dealing with a great deal of pressure still. Um, they've trained their whole childhood for this one moment and it's going to be exciting to see the impact that Simone Biles will have on the sport of gymnastics because she's that talented. Absolutely and what are some of the major ways you've seen the sport evolve? since you were competing? The equipment has changed. The vault is now a vaulting table. It's a lot safer for these young girls to compete on, which is wonderful to see for the sport. Also, they have better training mechanisms preparing for these big maneuvers. They have tumble tracks and things of that nature. But the biggest change is the scoring system. Back in the day, it was all about striving for that perfect 10. And, you know, everyone wanted to be Nadia Comaneci from the 76 Olympics. And now you can even score an 18 if you have that high of a start value. But you will see some high 16s, of course course from Simone Biles. And is there help for these young women in the psychological aspects? I mean, I always think competing, as we were saying earlier, at such a young age, at such a high level, is so difficult mentally as well. Is there help for the athletes in that regard? There are sports psychologists mm -hmm. out there, and I think a number of these young gymnasts are using them. There's a lot of fears, as I spoke about what I went through throughout my whole career, not just at the 96 Olympics, but for many of those 18 years. There's a lot of mental blocks and self-doubt. Absolutely. Now, this year's team is the most diverse in the history of the sport, which is so exciting. And of course, you paved the way for athletes of color. Did you ever feel out of place or in any way unwelcome when you were when you were a gymnast? You know, in the 96 team, there was an African-American, an Asian-American, a Romanian-American. and So there was so a, there, you there, go. there has been yeah. diversity even at the top of the sport. Obviously, Gabby Douglas winning in 2012, first African-American to win the all-around. Simone Biles, as you know, exactly. Lori Hernandez, Ali Reisman, Jewish. Um, also, Gabby Douglas is competing again. So it is a very diverse team. However, I think you are starting to see more diversities in the in the local gym. So if you walk in a gymnastics gym these days, you do see more young gymnasts of color. And I love the fact that this team is uh, is known to be a very diverse team and they will make history. That is so wonderful indeed. Now, of course, you are also co-chair of the President's Council on Fitness. Why is this so important to you to spread 
spread the word on fitness and good health for the nation's children. Well, I truly feel blessed. I'm turning 40 this year, and I am Go Go Squeeze's goodness ambassador. And it's all about educating and empowering kids, parents, families, school systems to understand the importance of healthy snacking. And we're so excited to partner up with Action for Healthy Kids, a nonprofit organization that has is already in 29,000 schools, making an impact, educating. Um, communities on the importance of physical activity and healthy nutrition and to be a, a spokesperson and to speak out about the importance of this issue of healthy snacking making one smart change each and every day is a dream for me I've been I've been focused on nutrition my whole life because yeah. of my Olympic journey and now as a mom of two young girls I understand that it's up to me to to teach my young girls about the importance of healthy eating moms we are our kids uh, first teachers in life, and I'm going to teach my daughters that healthy eating is, is the key to success, the key to happiness, and the key to reaching their full potential. And it is certainly a lifelong effort. It sounds like you're very passionate about this, so it's wonderful. I'm, yeah, I'm passionate about being a mom. I mean, yeah. It was, yeah. When I was younger, it was all about being an Olympic gymnast, and now it's about being a mom and, and showing my kids love with time each and every day with them. Well, it's wonderful. And Dominique, thank you so much for coming to see us today. Thank you. Thank you.